человек, допустим, на звук салюта или на вождение, ну, что нас только горячие точки. Но когда он рассказывает, он рассказывает конкретно ту ситуацию, в которую он попал. То есть самый ход вот этой горячей точки, они из мирной жизни. Но мы работаем с ситуацией вот, конкретно травмирующей, как они, ну, как мы это можем Causes him to be angry. 
Но во время а, работы над травмами, особенно на мальчике и события, а, пациентов и терапевтов, они должны в состоянии объяснить, почему тот или иной момент вызывает у них негативные ощущения, а не с травмой. He was in a hole because the artillery was coming down on him. The bombs were falling on him. He was in a small hole. Now, what I'm going to ask him, and we're going to talk about this a lot today, what I'm going to ask him is, is do you think, my patient, do you think that is the reason why a tight space causes you to be angry because it reminds you of being in that hole as the bonds are falling. So we go through the trauma a couple of times so that we can pick out all of these things that um, arouse his symptoms. Now, once we go through it for the first three sessions, that's probably enough. By then, we should have three. We have three narratives, and by then, we should have a list of all our hot spots. No. So then, that's session one through three. So session, so session four, five, and six, that should be enough to get us to focus just on the hot spots. Okay. Now, what you know, the first session, second session, well, the first session we're talking about um, psychoeducation. Yeah, uh, we're talking about um, an overview of traumatic. Um, Post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. We're talking about all these kind of things. I'm just giving you education. Okay. And so that's really one for two. First two sessions. Then the third, third session is the first time we do this um, imaginary Imaginal exposure, the first time we go through this story. And so I explained to him the process of imaginary exposure and I explained to him why we're doing it. I explained to him. I explained to him what I'm looking for in these things. I explained to him that what I'm looking for are the things that are causing arousal of these symptoms. So then we go through the process of telling the story for 30 or 40 minutes. And then I explained to him, after we're done, we talk about his hot spots and the way that he was aroused while telling that story. And then four and five, we do the same thing. It's just that I don't begin the session by explaining the process. He already knows the process. Что 
So now we've gone through the story a total of three times. And again, I told you all before, use your own discretion as far as how many times you go through this. But by the time you get to session six, you can focus just on the hot spots. And the um, intensity of some of the hot spots should have been reduced by Hello. Any other questions? Does that answer that answer your question? Right. Does that trigger any other questions? You, you probably have a lot of questions, huh? Okay, that's when we go this one. That's when we go through the story. That's him. And the reason we call it imaginal exposure or imaginary exposure is because he's telling me the story, the traumatic event that took place. But he's telling me as though it happened today, or he's there now. I don't want him to tell me, well, I was walking through the woods. I want him to imagine I'm walking through the woods. Okay. All of this is on YouTube now. We've got 30 lectures, yeah, 30 lectures on YouTube just from this seminar. Um, my, if you, if you need help, find it. Send me an email. I'll, I'll send you the link. If you got Facebook, send me a friend or press on Facebook. Um, I'll also send you the lecture notes. PowerPoint. You can have all the notes, everything. Okay. You can do this yourself using my And I'll send it, I'll send it to you either in English or Russian, whatever you want, or both. Okay. Now, you have a question. Now, what we're going to talk about now, and as we go through this next section, if you have questions about any of this stuff or anything unrelated to any of this stuff, feel free to stop me and ask. Now this is um как человека выводить из состояния напряжения, когда он будет рассказывать о том, что он сейчас делает. I don't necessarily want to decrease the intensity of emotion. 
But remember, the first couple of sessions, we told him how to calm himself down. We went through what's called breathing retraining. Now that should take care of our problem as long as he's been practicing it. Если же пациент практиковался в этой методике сам, то проблем никаких не должно быть. И как я уже говорил прежде, нельзя останавливать человека и прерывать его исследование. But what I've done, the first session, I've explained to him trauma um, symptoms. Because what I wanted to do is normalize the symptoms. I wanted to understand it's normal for someone who's gone through trauma. And so that's going to give him a little bit of um, relief from anxiety, just understanding that you're going to have these kind of symptoms, this is going to happen. And as we go through imaginal um, therapy, this is what's going to happen. This is what you should expect. And we'll go slowly first. Now, I'm reminding him to practice the breathing. And as he's telling me the story, I'm telling him, How are you, sir? How do you do? <laughs> I know he's speaking, but probably better than your mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just embarrassed. Your English is probably better than my Russian. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait and embarrass you later. Okay, so I don't want to overexcite my patient. But a certain amount of anxiety is not only expected, it's intended. Because what we're trying to do is desensitize and normalize the emotions. I, I told y'all a story the first, the first day, I'm pretty sure I told you this story, about a veteran who was in his 80s. And when he told the story, he still cried. Um, he was a senator from Hawaii. But he was a Marine in World War II. 
And when he talked about um, what he went through, it was a very emotional for him. That's 70 years ago. So during the therapy, I expect emotions. If I don't have emotions, I have a problem with my patient. Now, what we're trying to do is get the emotional um, arousal at a level where the patient can live with it. There's a, there's a great movie in English, Saving Private Ryan. I saw that at the theater. At the movie theater. When it first came out. And I was in Florida. So there were a lot of there's a lot of old people living in Florida. The theater was full of veterans. Old World War II veterans. When when the movie was over, it was silent. The people weren't talking, they weren't saying where are we going to go for dinner, they were not saying anything. Yes, yes. 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 It's a problem for both of us, though. Well, you need to keep working with your patient. But your, your patient hasn't become either comfortable with you or comfortable with the process enough to be emotional, to be real, normal. Now, that brings up something not just about trauma therapy. That brings up another thing. I have patients who come and see me for all different kinds of things. With marriages, addictions, the behavior of children, uh, eating disorders, uh, gambling addictions. You know, so I treat a lot of different things. And sometimes my patient is not completely ready for treatment. So the first thing I need to do is give them education. Now, they may come to see me once. And so I try to give them as much information as I can as soon as possible. I may never see that patient again. But they will leave with a better understanding of what's wrong than they did when they got to me. So hopefully they're going to get help somewhere. Okay. I'm, I'm helping them understand that you need help and this is why I think you need help. 
Человек, который как минимум, по крайней мере, старается объяснить, что пациенту а, нужна помощь и а, дает ему инструменты, способы, как же получить эту помощь. Но иногда бывает так, что пациент не готов к помощи Иногда они просто не готовы воспринять то, что человек а, может предложить в качестве помощи. Um, you, you remember... Yeah. You remember um, I mentioned one day last week that a lot of people think therapy is just um, pleasant conversation over tea. Well, that's not, that's not therapy. But a lot of people think that's what it's going to be like. And so I tell them as much as I can, as soon as I can, but I'm also helping them understand therapy is difficult. And it's painful. And it's uncomfortable. But it's worth it. And most people, when they come to me, they're in enough pain that they guess, yes, yes, this is fine. But then when we start, it's not so nice, and sometimes they leave. Um, one patient in particular I can think of now, and when I dealt with her as a patient, the conversation is just like conversations that we've had in this room. It's very superficial, not meaningful, not emotional. And when it started to become emotional, she just quit drinking. So what the, the question that you're asking and the solution to that question is basically I have to establish a relationship where there's trust. One thing that would help with people like this is, is something I'm trying to start here is group therapy. Because I want um, people who aren't going to open up emotionally to watch other people do it. Uh, and so eventually when we start group therapy here in Nipple Patros doing this, um, if you are working with me or if you're not working with me, well, let's start over. Eventually, when we start doing group therapy in Nipple Patros, keep it. If you're involved in um, treatment with me, as, as far as if you're working with me, with your patients, you can send your patients to our group therapy sessions. If you're not involved in our group, if you're not involved with me providing therapy, you can still send your patients to our group. And we're going to try to have these set up. Um, actually, we're going to talk about it tomorrow night about when we're going to do this. Uh, we'll try to come up with some kind of a schedule before the end of the month. So, I don't think we'll start before the end of the month, but... Uh, the meetings with some of the social workers tomorrow night?
Мы завтра будем, у вас будет собрание с социальными работниками, с ними обсудим этот момент. И это один из вопросов, которые мы будем говорить. Как раз мы будем смотреть на друг друга. Мы поговорим. Кто вы из координаторов? Как вы зовут координатора? Лена, да? Да. Это Мэнни Бут. Да. Да, да, да. The dark hair. Да, да, да. The one with the upstairs. Да, которая проводила тоже семинар. Да. Тоже идет, да? Да. Я буду лей-аут пропозицию для нее. Поэтому мы будем разговаривать с ней тоже. И мы попробуем сделать что-то. Мы попробуем хотя бы иметь скетчу до конца этого месяца. Мы, возможно, у нас будет уже точное расписание к концу этого месяца. Нам вряд ли, что мы начнем осуществлять эту групповую терапию, если мы уже не скорее всего, Uh, we have to have a way. Anyway, I don't want to get into all of that. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to talk about. Um, I went through a list of things, um, and I think you might have been here. I went through a list of other um, topics that no way to talk about. Now, if if y'all want to go through the same, trust me, if y'all want to go through the same um, PTSD treatment therapy that I just went through, that today is the last day of, if y'all want to do that again, that's fine with me. Если же кому-то понадобится еще раз пройти этот курс по травме и ПДСР, тот, который сегодня последний день заканчивается, то без проблем он сможет провести какую-то индивидуальную лекцию за определенное время. Группы студентов. Да, окей. Мы можем сделать это. Тогда у него есть другие темы, которые мы обсудим. Пожалуйста. Да, so you can actually see it done. That's one of the other things we're talking about. Okay. This, no, tomorrow night. That's one of the things that we'll talk about with the coordinator tomorrow. There's a list of things that y'all need. You know some of them, but you don't know some of them. So some things you need, you don't know you need. Some things that they need, they don't know they need. That's fine. That's the nature of the business. So what you need is education and practice. And you need supervised practice. And that's one of the things that I'm going to do. Now how we, now how we do that um, has not exactly been determined. How, what the supervised practice will look like it's not exactly the same. Как же будет происходить практика с супервизором? Это еще точно не определено. But what they did with me when I was trained is that I watched my a therapist work with a patient. Ну как было, как дело состоялось с одним человеком? Он наблюдал за работой, за процессом терапии своего, то есть консультанта терапевта и его пациента. Sitting in the room. But I'm over here and I'm quiet. And then I, I watched the therapist work with that patient in complete therapy. 
with that patient. Uh, that was a total of 30 days of treatment. Uh, now, I watched, okay, and then a therapist, my supervisor, watched me work with the patient for a 30-day treatment. But I'm not watching him work with one patient. I'm watching him work with a bunch of patients. And then he's watching me work with a bunch of patients. This process took one year. Uh, for one year, I worked as an intern. Uh, and then for another year, I worked with direct supervision. Uh, um, the way it works in America is that um, I can't be licensed until I have done this for a year. So, and so the, the whole process really takes two years. Uh, because I'm educated for one year. I'm educated for one year in the treatment center. And that's before I ever work with patients. And then there's one year as an intern. Okay. Alright, so that's what I want to offer. I don't know whether we're going to do it like that, but we'll do something the same. See, the, the problem here, it's like there's a fire here, and we need to put it out right now. So we don't have the luxury of doing it over a span of time. So we need to come up with a better one. A quicker. I know what I I know what I think we should do. And we're just gonna see if it's practical. You got a question? I can see the wheels turning in your head. <laughs> She's thinking about it. Uh, all right. So, what I think we'll probably end up doing is um, how many patients do you have? Are you, are you seeing patients? Are you seeing patients at all? Okay. Are you seeing patients? How many patients do you see? As, as far as um, trauma? No. Okay. So, what normally would happen is that you would be assigned a patient, and you would be assigned a patient, and you would be assigned a patient, and assigned. You would have a patient. A new patient comes along, this patient is yours. And I would just talk with you before you meet the patient. I may meet the patient with you. What it might be is that I have patients, and you just watch me. So we'll just go through the process and try to figure out what's the best map. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Now, there's another 
in positions. Instead of hot spots, what we're looking for, you're turning into hot sun. What we're looking for are incorrect thoughts in positions. Здесь вместо выявления горячих точек лидера мы будем работать и работать над тем, чтобы находить эти неправильно неверные убеждения человека и позиции. Alright, and so we're going to go through and we're going to have the patient identify what they think happened. То есть мы пройдем такой этап, этап определения пациента, что с ними произошло. Why they think it happened? Почему это произошло? Как им кажется, пациентам? And that we're going to try to get to the truth and help them to understand the process in a little bit. И поможем им, поможем им найти адекватное мировоззрение, адекватную оценку ситуации. Now, if you were confused about prolonged exposure therapy, this is just simple follow the direction. То есть, если же вы запутались в процессе э, длительной терапии воздействия, то здесь эта терапия довольно таки простая. Здесь просто нужно следовать инструкциям. Все по плану. Вполне вероятно, что для себя вы подберете либо же одну какую-то определенную терапию, либо комбинацию двух этих. One of the differences is uh, this is a lot more paperwork. <coughs> now, we should have taken a break when you arrived, but we'll take a break now that she's arrived. <coughs> How about 10 minutes?